Welcome to Soul Meds 2. Today we want to focus on the letter L for lamb. And lamb is quite an interesting animal because lamb is kind of central to many things in the Bible. For the thought today, to have the mind of a child doesn't make you childish. To be dependent on Jesus makes you the strongest person in the world. For our scripture today, we want to focus on Isaiah. You can find it. Isaiah 43. We're going to read 18 to 28. Forget the things that happened in the past. Do not keep on thinking about them. I'm about to do something new. It is beginning to happen, even now. Don't you see it coming? I'm going to make a way for you to go through the desert. I will make streams of water in the dry and empty land. Even wild dogs and owls honor me. That is because I provide water in the desert for my people to drink. I cause streams to flow in this dry land for my chosen ones. I do it for the people I made for myself. I want them to sing praise to me. Family of Jacob, you have not prayed to me as you should. People of Israel, you have not worn yourselves out for me. You have not brought me sheep for a burnt offering. You have not honored me with your sacrifices. I have not loaded you down by requiring grain offering. I have not made you tired by requiring you to burn incense. But you have not bought any sweet smelling cane for me. You have not given me the fattest parts of your animal sacrifices. Instead, you have loaded me down with your sins. You have made me tired with the wrong things you have done. I am the one who wipes out your lawless act. I do it because of who I am. I will not remember your sins anymore. But let us go to court together. Remind me of what you have done. State your case. Prove to me that you are not guilty. Your father Jacob sinned. The father I sent to you to teach you refused to obey me. So I put high officials of your temple to shame. I let Jacob's family be totally destroyed. And I let people make fun of Israel. Lamb is an important animal in our Christian faith. It was the key part of the sacrifice of the people of Israel. So what is it about the lamb that is important? Why not a chicken or a dog? We talked about dove before, which was often used for the poorest sacrifice. And we have the ram, like the one Abraham was given when he put Isaac on the altar. A lamb is innocent and young, following so easily the care of its mother or father. Compared to the kid, which is a baby goat, it is very gentle. The kid likes to be the king of the hill. It likes to be first. And it's always fighting or butting heads with others. Christ was called the Lamb of God in John 1, 29. The Lamb was the first choice for sacrifice. It was preferred to any other. But it had to be perfect. And not only perfect, it had to be the firstborn. The character of the Lamb in the Bible is one of gentleness and ready for sacrifice. In Scripture we find Israel in captivity. God defends his decision to allow this to come to Israel. Israel didn't have to sacrifice for some things outside of their land. But they had just got tired of duty, their duty as chosen people of God. 
They got tired of all the laws. They thought they had to obey. Do you get tired of the things you have to do as a Christian? I know many Christians that get tired of church because of, well, there's a lot of politics and there's a lot of fighting. But do we get tired of being a Christian? All the Bible reading, praying, not having fun is what a lot of people think Christianity is about. They think Christianity is all about rules. Rules, rules, rules. You can't do this. You can't do that. Such a negative religion. It's terrible. In real life, being a Christian is about being a lamb. A pure lamb. Which is ready to be used for God. In these verses, we find the people obeyed all the rules, but not ready to be used for God. God says he gave them everything they wanted. He even forgave all their sin. He didn't even enforce the rules when they were in captivity. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. He was the, and is, the perfect Lamb. It was his blood that gives you and me the freedom in Christ. It was his blood that takes away all those rules that... Israel had to live by. But even with all these things that God gave Israel, they continued not to see what God really wanted. Instead of serving God, they wanted God to serve them by continuing to sin. Well, we kind of do this. We kind of like to have God as our servant and not us as servant of God. Maybe we don't continue to sin, but we demand what God from God in our prayer. Well, we do sin all the time, even if we don't think we do. We think we can do good works on the outside and get God to answer with blessing. That was kind of Israel's idea. That wasn't a new idea. But all was not lost. God pleads with Israel to do things to cause him to remember. Remember what? Remember their sin? God, God says he can't do that. You know, when God forgives, he forgives our sin. He doesn't bring it back. Only we do that. Or remember he had chosen and made the nation of Israel. Now that's a good remembrance. God wants to remember why he created a nation as great as Israel was and could be. He is. And we'll always be ready to forgive. And when he forgives, the sin is always gone. He is always ready to restore his power to your life and my life. All he asks is for us to take a sum of our life. From this we can see if there is anything that would make us justified to live without penalty. In this scripture it says, let's go to court together. Let's talk about this. We need to ask ourselves questions about our life, like, are we tired of all the rules Christians have to do? I would say, there were times in my life, but that is very true. Are we serious about our Christian life? That's another question. Christianity is about a relationship, and if we have a serious relationship, a really serious one, we have to think about how serious and how does it affect us. So what does this mean? It means that we are not only doing good things to please others, but that we have an attitude of service to God and not being served by God. Like Israel, we need a pure lamb to sacrifice. We need a firstborn lamb to shed blood to cover our sin. That lamb is Jesus Christ. He died so we can live a life of peace 
and happiness. Jesus the Lamb wants us to use him so we can be justified. We do not have to become tired of Christian life, but enjoy the promised power. And I think that's where the problem is. We become Christians and we expect to have power, but we don't want to do or obey what God wants us to do. So then we have lack of power and we get tired of Christianity. If you had tried to work for your salvation, you need to come to the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. It is His blood that will secure your relationship and open the blessing. Maybe you pray every day, but you pray you want God to serve you. Maybe you pray every day, but as a servant of God. Think about your prayer life and how you pray. Today, only you can answer those questions. I urge you to take an account of your life. Are you a servant of God through the blood of the Lamb? Really good question. For the prayer, pray with me. Dear God, thank you for being the sacrifice lamb for me. Without you, I would have to bear the burden of my sin alone. May I have a lamb simplicity to enjoy your complexity. In Jesus' name, amen. In reflection, we want to ask four questions. How serious are we, are you and me, about our Christian life? Do we really take it seriously? Or is it just kind of a, just another friendship, another buddy idea? I like to hang out with God. How does our prayer, how do we pray? And how often do we pray for God to give us our desires? Many times in our prayer, as we asked before, we pray that God is our servant. And so we ask for him to give us things for our desires and not his. What does God want to remember? God wants to remember, if you read the scripture, he wants to remember us giving him glory. What about your life? What does God want to remember in your life? Are we tired of the rules? The last question of celebrating the freedom in Christ. Two ideas here. Are we tired of the rules? Or celebrating the freedom in Christ? Freedom in Christ, we will never get tired of because it's so empowering. But being tired of the rules, that may be true. And we need to kind of rethink our relationship with Jesus Christ. I really encourage you to look at your life and take an account as to how you communicate with God and what's keeping that power from you. The next is M for mouse. I look forward to having you participate in the meditation, understanding the mouse.